would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you worry for a victory reign? There's wonderful power in the blood. I 
the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can you just lift your voice to him this morning? Just talk to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord. Father, we praise you this morning, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. You took our place, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, you died. 
you would just put your hand right here on your heart. And when you sing that, think about this place right here. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Good. Yeah, I had a good dream. 
Seems very pretty for us.
Praise the Lord. Everybody love Mary? Yeah. <laughs> if you turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 1, or you can look at it off the screen there. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The New Living Translation says, and I am, I am certain that God who began a good work within you will continue his good work until it is finally finished. Yeah. The Jewish Bible says it this way, I am sure that the one that began a good work among you will keep it going until it is completed on the day of redemption. I'm going to ask you a favor this morning. Would you just stretch forth your hands and pray for me this morning? Hallelujah. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, this morning, Lord, to know you, God, Lord, to serve you, Lord, to be a part of the church, Lord, of the living God, Lord. Father, the kingdom that has no end, Lord. Father, we are grateful, Lord, for all that you are to us, Lord God, for every provision, Lord, for everything that you do, every every, every healing, Lord God, that you, you give to us, Lord God, every blessing you pour out, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, you would anoint every word this morning, Lord. Father, I'm your vessel this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I know that you already know that when I say that our world is overcome with anxiety and addictions and entitlement and grudges and selfishness, just to name a few. And it would be easier to get caught up in all of the stuff that's going on around us and become frustrated and, and weary of it and tired of it, you know, and even depressed by it all. But it, it, it's an ugly mess that leaves us stressed, you know, and, and strained. And if we're not careful, it can shake our very confidence, Amen. you know, Amen. in the strongest Amen. among us. Yes. But this morning, if we can let these encouraging words of Paul ring in our ears and in our spirit today, Paul's confidence in the midst of a very, very difficult time in his life helped me when I was studying this message this week. It was it was a horrific time, you know, when the Romans, uh, 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 they wanted all this Jesus talk to stop. You know, uh, they were looking for reasons to throw Christians in prisons. They they persecuted every believer that they caught up with, you know. And, and if anyone should have been shaken by their faith, it should have been Paul. Yeah. See, Paul, he knew the next steps, the next footsteps that he heard out in the hallway might be the guards coming, the Roman guards coming to take him away, you know, to his execution. Yes. His only bed at the time that he wrote this verse was a cold, hard stone floor in a dark, cramped, damp prison cell. And not, not, not an hour had passed when he was freed from the chains and he was separated from his friends. He was unjustly accused. He was brutally treated and beaten. And, and, and if ever anybody had a right to complain, I think it was Paul. Amen. Amen. You know, he and, you know, he was almost left forgotten in this horrible Roman prison. And this was the same man that said in 2 Corinthians 11, uh, starting with verse 23, I am more in laborers abundant in stripes above measure. He, they, they beat him in stripes above measure in prison more frequent in deaths often. Uh, of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. 39 stripes he received. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I was suffered a shipwreck. A, a, a night and a day I have been in the deep, he said. You know, in journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, and in perils among false brethren. Verse 27, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and darkness. And beside all those things that are without, 
that come upon me daily are the care of the churches. He had a lot on his shoulders. Amen. You know? And while he was sitting in, in this prison, he, he writes to the church of Philippi, and, and he tells them that we read in, first, in Philippians 1 and 6, he said, being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. He said that with certainty. He was certain, Amen. Brother Pentecost. You know, and, and the word confident is not a weak word. You know, it, it, that's a word that packs a punch. He was confident. Amen. I know that I know that I know, Amen. hallelujah, Amen. that my God is able. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. And that means that uh, uh, confident means being certain or having assurance in. It was a bad time for Paul. A bad situation for him, bad for the church. Uh, it, was a, it was a time when the Romans would have loved to erase every church and every synagogue from the face of the earth. No believer was safe. Yet Paul, he wrote to the church and he said, I, I know how it looks. I know it's hard to have confidence when up is down and down is up, you know, and when, you know, uh, everything that we stand for is being attacked or persecuted while I'm sitting here in prison, he writes, you know, uh, for doing the right thing. I didn't do anything wrong, yet they imprisoned me. Amen. It's hard to have confidence when you see sin exalted and righteousness being made fun of. Yes. It's hard when the people that you trust in let you down. Mm -hmm. And Paul tells them again, he said, there's one thing you can be certain of. There's one thing you can be confident in, that he... Hallelujah. Let me hear you say that he, Amen. that he that has begun a good work. Hallelujah. You know, I, I wish somebody would get a hold of this this morning. He that has begun a good work. Who is this he of this verse? God himself. God himself. Paul, Paul, he wasn't talking about the his own good works. He wasn't talking about the things that he had done uh, in Philippi. Uh, Paul, he was the missionary that God had sent to preach the gospel in this community. Paul, he, he did a great work there. He planted a church. He built it up. And then he writes this letter to the church from prison. And he didn't mention all the work that he had done. It was talking about God here. Amen. It was talking about what God has done. Hallelujah. In Acts 14 and 27, when Paul and Bar Barnabas had returned from their first missionary journey, they, they gathered together in this church in a, a city called Antioch, uh, not to tell what they had done, but what God had done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, and when they gathered together, the church there, they, they went over and they rehearsed all the things that God had done for them and with them, you know, and how that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles in that area. It wasn't Paul. It was God that began the work Amen. in them. Amen. It's God that began the work in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. It wasn't Paul. It was God. And that's why Paul said that, you know, salvation is all God and not man. Amen. All God and not man. Amen. Paul didn't forget where he was when, when God reached down, hallelujah, you know, and saved him. Amen. He said in 1 Timothy 1, he said, I, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for he hath counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was, a, was before a blasphemer. And a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy. Yes. Hallelujah. Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly, exceeding abundant in faith and love, which is in Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, oh yeah, he, I, I was a blasphemer. I was the worst of all. I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. I made fun of Christians. I was violent. I hurt them. Yeah. You know, he, he was all those things because he spoke strongly against Jesus, yeah. you know, and he denied that Jesus was the Messiah. He arrested men and women and tried to make them denounce their faith. You know, he enjoyed inflicting pain on believers. Uh -huh. yep. But then one day 
on his way to Damascus, where he was going to persecute more Christians, the Lord suddenly appeared to him in Acts 9 and 3. And as he journeyed to Damascus, suddenly there shone around him a light from heaven. And he falls to the ground and he hears a voice. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? See, it wasn't Paul's plan (coughs) to become a Christian. It was God who started the work in him. God who started the work in him. And and he says in 1 Timothy 1, he said, uh, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief, of whom I'm the worst, you know? And however, for this cause, I obtain mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Aren't you glad that Jesus had long suffering with you? I'm so glad he had long suffering that he didn't give up on me. Hallelujah. When he could have, when I was at my worst. Amen. Amen. That Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should thereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Amen. In Acts chapter 16, Paul didn't he didn't intend to go to Philippi. He wanted to go to share, he wanted to go share the word somewhere else, you know, but the Spirit wouldn't let him, wouldn't allow him to. And then Paul gave him, gave uh, God gave Paul a vision in the night, a man. Uh, of Macedonia came to him and said, come and help us. And because of that vision, Paul crossed over the sea and he landed in Europe. And when he arrived in Philippi, the capital of Macedonia, he preached to first to a group of women who had gathered by the riverside. No doubt doing their laundry, Brother Pentecost. Out there working, you know. And he went to them first. They were a captive audience. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And as Paul preached, God spoke to the heart of a woman named Lydia. And she responded to God. It doesn't say that she already wanted to come to the Lord. No, the Lord who brought Paul to preach opened her heart. Amen. God's word opens our heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And it, God's word shows us who we are. Amen. And how much that we need. A Savior. Hallelujah. God's word convicts us. It brings conviction to our heart. Hallelujah. I love God's word. Hallelujah. I want to be a better me. How about you this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. And not only did she open her heart to God. But the hearts of her whole family and all that were with her became believers. Amen. See how it happens when you come to the Lord? People all around you Amen. come to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And as and, and uh, then there was a girl that was possessed with a demon that had gotten delivered. And it made some of the more religious acting people angry. I said acting. angry that Paul and Silas and so angry that Paul and Silas uh, got thrown into jail Mm -hmm. this this girl was delivered of her demon and 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 while they were in, in jail in prison and it said they were in a prison inside of a prison they were deep in the prison. Yes. And while they were in prison, Paul and Silas began to sing and began to praise the Lord and began to glorify God. Yes. And, and you would think, why? How, how can you praise God in a place like this? Yes. Where is your God? You know? And but it didn't it didn't shake their faith. They were yes. confident yes. in God, yes. being confident that God is going to finish what yes. He started. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it said in the middle of the night, while they are singing, there's an earthquake and the floor began to shake and the walls began to shake. Glory to God. And the ceiling started to crumble. Praise the Lord. You know, and and it scared even the jailers, you know, to the point that they cried out to Paul's God and were saved. Hallelujah. Paul didn't say this. 
Paul, he, he didn't say, I did this. But he knew that it was God Amen. that was doing that incredible work Amen. in Philippi. Yes. You know, it wasn't him. It was God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, we are God's workmanship created in Jesus Christ. And I want to I want to pause here to remind us that our confidence must be in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your, your confidence can't be so much in the guy that's in the pulpit. Amen. Your confidence has to be in God. Amen. Because Amen. these guys Amen. fail Amen. and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. But if our confidence is in God, Amen. we're going to make heaven our home. Amen. How many of you want to make heaven your home? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Not in what we can do ourselves, but in our faith in Amen. God, our confidence in God. He is a way maker. Yes. He is a way maker. He does Amen. make a way when there yes. seems to be no way. Amen. Has he ever made a way where there seemed to be no way for you? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Time after time, he picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. Our faith must be anchored in Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Not the church, not the pastor, Amen. not our brothers Amen. and sisters. Our, our faith has to be anchored in Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is able to do anything, Amen. anything Amen. but fail. Yes. Amen. But fail. Amen. And if we're not careful, we can start thinking, you know, that, you know, it's because of what we're doing that's bringing salvation to people or, or that the church is growing because of our talents or our charisma or our ministries. But no, it's not that. Paul said, be confident in this very thing that he. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He. he works us. Amen. 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 Not my own giftings, not my own works. My confidence is him, he was saying. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. If your confidence is in God, would you shout hallelujah this morning? Hallelujah. 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 It matters in whom we place our confidence. Amen. Philippians 3, Paul says, put no confidence in the flesh. Yes. See, that's it. Either you trust in the arm of the flesh or you trust in the arm of God. Amen. And, and, and uh, you know, you, you'll never get to Philippians 4, which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, unless you first say my hope, my trust, my, my life, is, and my confidence is in Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is in Lord God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless him, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody remember being in junior high? Huh. Been a long time ago. Long time ago. You dread those days. <laughs> when I was in junior high, we played a played a, a game out on the playground called wall ball. Okay, and and you. A whole bunch of boys would just spread out, boys and girls, you know, would spread out. And one person had the ball, and, and you had to hit the blacktop first and then bounce it off the wall. And, and someone would try to catch it on its way back out, you know. And, and if, it, if it hit you and you didn't catch it, you were out, okay? And another rule is if you miss catching it and, 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 and it got by you, then you were out also. Well, this day, I had the ball, and one of my friends missed catching it, and, and the ball rolled over by the sidelines, and, and, and over on the sidelines, there was a group of guys that weren't playing ball, but they were there, and, and it fell at the feet of one of the gangs that were in our school. And the leader of that gang, who, who uh, had, had been held back a couple of years, and could have ridden with hell's angels. You know, he picked up that ball as I was going over to get it from him. He reared back and he chucked it as far as it could go, you know, away from me in the opposite direction. And, 
And I know, you know, it's hard to believe looking at me now, but in eighth grade at the age of 14, I wasn't even 100 pounds. You know, I, I mean, I wasn't as ripped as I am today. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing at. <laughs> at the age of 14, though I had memorized them, I hadn't yet perfected the fruits of the Spirit. Uh-oh. <laughs> and, and I didn't believe, you know, I was as small as I was in my mind. <laughs> you know, and, and all I know is that when he threw that ball... A fire lit in me, and it was not the Holy Ghost fire. You know, and, and, and I got mad, you know, and I ran up to him full speed, you know, and and, uh, and, and, and I shoved him as hard as I could as he was turning back around after throwing the ball, you know, and with all 100 pounds running, you know, it, it knocked him backwards, you know, and, and for a moment, I was most proud. <laughs> <laughs> and I yelled and when I pushed him at the top of my voice which is pretty comical when you're 14 go up get the ball <laughs> I'm a real boy <laughs> and he spun around towering over me and he shoved me Sending me flying backwards, but not knocking me off my feet, which made me proud. <laughs> and then something happened. That whole gang got to their feet. And they started walking towards me. And, and any confidence that I had left my body. <laughs> you know? And they started walking towards me, you know? And, and, uh, and I began to do what any uh, race... Anybody that was raised in church would do, I began to pray, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. But I didn't let them know. <laughs> and I thought, this is, this is the way I'm going to die. <laughs> this is how I'm going to die. You know, when all of a sudden a, 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 a booming voice, a deep booming voice from behind me uh, said, Elwood, Elwood, we got your back. And, and I looked over my shoulder to see about 10 older guys, much bigger than I was, you know, uh, from the football team standing behind me. The Lord heard my prayer. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I can't tell you the confidence that came back in me at that moment. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I puffed my chest out in my best squeaky voice. Go get the ball. <laughs> and no kidding, that big dude took off running, got that ball, brought it back to me and began apologizing. And you know, he was good to me the rest of my school year. <laughs> But that confidence didn't come over me because of my abilities. No. Right. That confidence, it came over me because of what stood behind me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And there's one that is standing behind you if Amen. you have invited Amen. Jesus into your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That you should have confidence Amen. in. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And know that he who has begun a good work in you is right there to see that you are going to finish it. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. He'll be faithful to complete it. He'll keep working on you until the day that he returns. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. To God. Thank you, Jesus. Every day, God, do a new thing in me. Amen. Every day, Lord, make me better than I was the day before. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Lord right now. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank God for who he is this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That confidence came over me because of those ten that stood behind me. Yeah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one that's standing behind you, the mighty God. Amen. Can you say mighty God? 
the mighty God. Hallelujah. He's the one that 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 walked on the water. Praise the Lord. He's the one that that caused the lame to leap. You know, to get up and leap. Hallelujah. He's the one that opened blinded eyes and and caused the dumb to speak. Praise the Lord. He's the one that raised the dead. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. His power is such that he can do whatever he pleases Amen. without difficulty. Amen. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. He can't be checked. He can't be restrained. He can't be frustrated. He's all powerful. Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You, hallelujah. 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 I feel something breaking loose in here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel something coming in somebody that maybe came in here discouraged today. Hallelujah. You can be confident in your God. Hallelujah. You can be confident. All this stuff that's going on in our world around us, look who's standing behind you. Puff your chest out. Hallelujah. God has got this. Amen. God has got this. Hallelujah. There's nothing too difficult. For Amen. our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know in our own selves and our own abilities, we, we fail and we fall short of the glory of God. We get discouraged often, but like Paul so beautifully said, we can be confident in him who started Amen. this work in us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He who began a good work in you. Amen. Hallelujah. When he said in you, he's talking about being born again. The work in you, being born again by asking Jesus Christ into your heart. Yes. Ezekiel, Ezekiel put it this way in Ezekiel 36. He said, then will I sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, from all your idols. Will I cleanse you a new heart, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Hallelujah. And I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. Yes. Hallelujah. Church, what God starts he continues. Amen. What God begins, Amen. He continues. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He doesn't leave anything undone. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. He continues. He will finish Amen. what He started. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh. Oh, glory to God. He who began a good work in you will perform it. That means. He'll carry it out Amen. to completion. I found out that our biggest growth, my biggest growth, comes through struggles. Yes. Amen. Amen. Anybody notice that? Amen. Comes through struggles. Uh, 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 you and I, we can't grow in Christ likeness without some struggles. Amen. Without us falling flat. And him picking us back up and saying, you can do this. Amen. You can do this. Amen. Hallelujah. We fall flat. We realize I need God. I need Jesus. Amen. Help me, Lord. Amen. We don't just stay down there, you know, but he picks us back up. Amen. And he puts our feet on solid ground. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says, you can do this. Yes. We can do this. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 It's those struggles that we see. We really see if we've got faith in God. Amen. Yes. See, if we really see if our faith is in God. Amen. Amen. When we're going through struggles, Amen. it's all a part of the process of God making us who He wants us to be. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't like struggles. Anybody here like struggles? No. No. Let me hear you say no. 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 Nobody no. likes struggles. <laughs> Devil no. <laughs> but if we lean on the Lord through it all. Yes. Amen. Through it all. Yes. We'll come out stronger. Amen. Hallelujah. And better. Amen. 
Amen. We'll be able to do more for the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because our God is great. Oh, glory. Our God is great. Amen. 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 A bar of steel is worth five dollars. A bar of steel that's worth five dollars when made into ordinary horseshoes becomes ten dollars for one horseshoe. Oh. If that same bar of steel is then made into needles. The value rises to $350. If it's made into delicate springs for watches, it can become worth more than $250,000. Mm. The same bar of steel becomes even more valuable by being passed through one blast furnace right after another, and it gets harder and harder and stronger and stronger until it's finally ready for the task ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done here. We may not understand why we're going through the fire right now. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But one day we'll see how everything that we're going through Amen. is part of God polishing us. You know, shaping us and continuing a good work in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank the Lord. Paul says we, we're being prepared for the, the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, the great day when the King of Kings is going to return to this earth. Hallelujah. You know, and claim his bride. He's going to return in all power and all glory. This is the day that, uh, of God's final triumph over evil. You know, and when Christ comes, hallelujah, we are going to share in that glory. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. You and I, as part of the church, we're the bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That he is returning for. Amen. Paul said in Romans 8, he said, For I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. For the earnest expectation of, of the creature waited for the manifest, manifestation of the sons of God. The picture that Paul draws here is a picture of all creation looking around, mm -hmm. eagerly waiting in expectation for the glorious day when Jesus is going to return. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you looking for that day when Jesus is going to return? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, he's going to return and the sons of God are revealed, it says. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. At a wedding, when a bride comes through the doors, yeah. what does everybody's neck do? Uh -huh. We want to see, don't we? Amen. We want to see that bride, you know, uh, coming down the aisle, coming through the doors. And so we crane our neck around, you know, and uh, we're, we're eagerly waiting for that bride to show up. Everybody looks. We are the bride of Christ. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Next amen. are going to be turning. Hallelujah. Amen. To see the bride of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. We are being prepared now for the day when Jesus comes back to claim his bride. Amen. Is there anybody that's still excited for the coming of the Lord? Amen. Anybody waiting for the coming of the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited for amen. Jesus to return. Yes. Amen. I want to see my daddy. I want to see my grandparents. Hallelujah. I want to see my in-laws. Praise the Lord. I want to see friends that have gone on. Amen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in Christ. That we have sat and worshipped with. We will see again. We will worship with again. Hallelujah. If we keep our hearts right, if we continue to go through the fire as it comes upon us. Hallelujah. So that we are purified. You know? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. Yes. You. you don't want to miss this day. No, it's going to be a great day. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't want to miss it. You know, or, or are we too content with our day? Yeah. I'm not content Amen. with it. Amen. Mm -mm. Oh, glory you know, God help us to look forward to the great day, yeah. you know, that is coming when all of heaven is going to crane its neck <laughs> to see the bride of Amen. Jesus, hallelujah, coming through the gates. Amen. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Paul's talking about a church in Ephesians 5 and 26, and he's making her holy, and he's cleansing her by the washing of the word in order to present her holy and, and, and blameless, it says. You know, nothing that God allows in your life is for nothing. He's got a reason for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go through it anyway. Hallelujah. Amen. Hold your head high. God, I don't know why. I don't know, know how I'm going to get through this, but I can be confident, God, that you're right behind me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're lifting me up. Hallelujah. Amen. You're encouraging me. Your strength is greater than mine. My voice may be squeaking, but God, I know you're behind me, Lord. Lord Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Amen. 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 And that's why Paul says, while sitting in a prison cell, I'm confident that he who began a good work in you will carry it on yes. to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. God never starts something and leaves it unfinished. Amen. He's yeah. going to finish what he started. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand up this morning. Let's rejoice for a minute. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Do crank me something up there. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I've had fun in church today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. This altar is open this morning. Glory to God. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. If he started to work in you and you are you are here this morning, it's because he keeps drawing you. He keeps bringing you. Hallelujah. Because he's not done with you. Amen. Amen. He brings you to a place where you can be encouraged yes. in the middle of life's struggles yes. and hardships. Yes. He, keeps, he keeps putting it in your heart to get up. He keeps waking you up. Thank you, Lord. Because he wants you to be his bride. Amen. Hallelujah, man. And he wants to come into your heart today. And all you have to do is just ask. Him. Just say, Father, forgive me of, of my sins. Come into my heart and make me new. That's all you have to do. It's a gift. Salvation is a gift. But you have to want it. He doesn't force it on anyone. That's why you have to ask him. And I promise you, when Jesus comes into your life, you will never be the same. Amen. You'll never be the same. Is that right, believers? Amen. You'll never be the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, for this word today, God. Lord, I thank you for every individual that came to your house today, God. Lord, it was not by happenstance, Lord, that they arrived today, Lord God. It was not, Lord, by chance, Lord, that you made it sunny and, and the roads clear, God, that everyone could come to your house today, God. Lord, it was not by chance, God. It was designed by you, Lord, that we can learn, that we can have more and greater confidence in you, Lord, no matter what is coming our way. No matter how big the game, no matter what it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, may it be a life. May it be a living word, Lord, that goes out of this place with us, Lord. A seed, Lord, that's planted in our hearts, God, that we'll never forget this word. That our confidence must be in you, God. Hallelujah. And if it is, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift your hands and pray. Pray to him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord, today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way this morning, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Someone's neck and tell me a love of this morning. 